We are with Stefan Kallenbergs at Billy's Bottle Shop, a seven-minute walk from Billy's Beer Cafeteria in Antwerp. Here we are with Stefan at uh, his uh, bottle shop. That's how he's doing to survive with Billy's yep. <laughs> uh, closed. Yeah. And how are you doing, Stefan? Well, um, like I was saying, under the circumstances, we're doing fine, but yeah, you really miss the bar because I like it here in the shop as well, but it's different. You like, yeah, I really miss it when yeah, the people coming, they come by here at the shop, but it's very short. You have a, like a small chat, but yeah, it's different than you can have a drink together with them, have a long talk with them. You really miss that, the crowd, the, the people coming in, discovering the beers. But we're lucky that we have the, the shop here. It's uh, for me personally, it kind of like gives a structure to your day, which is very important for me. Uh, but also, yeah, you can keep your social contact and also, yeah, financially it's uh, because, yeah, we, we can be happy that we can get something from the government because, yeah, some of others like the events and catering and, and, and all the other stuff, they get nothing. So we get something, but yeah, it's not enough. So uh, especially not, it's the second lockdown. I had it like in 2020, yeah, we were open for only like five months, <laughs> in a year, only open for five months, because we started later than we, and normally we could start at June, the 8th of June, but we started the end of July because, yeah, things were a little bit difficult, so uh, we were open for only five months, so yeah, that's... So bomb. is it survival, or do you find in the craft beer... People um, in Antwerp are really supportive. Yeah, we, yeah, we get a lot of like support of like our regulars. Um, so I can say that, and it's not only if I speak for myself, but also if I hear it from the other bars, like people are really supportive about it. So uh, yeah, we can survive, but it's, but yeah, we have to be honest. It, it is like surviving. It's uh, it's not that you can say like, oh, I can uh, have some savings. No, it's uh, we have to be honest about that. that that's not possible. And it is that, yeah, so with the bar we open for like seven years and that's very painful to see that what you build up those seven years, it's like every month you see that disappear like snow under the sun and that's... Uh, and how about your employees? Uh, what are they? Uh, I had, I had about, well, I had 12 employees. So some of them also with, uh, so they get 70% of their wages. Some of them, they yeah, just bought a house or stuff. They said, yeah, it's not enough. So I also lost uh, yeah, some of my staff and that, that's also very painful to see, yeah. You're in terms of uh, going ahead, you're very optimistic. You've launched ticket sales for Billy's Beer yeah. Festival. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> you have to stay positive and that's, because yeah, it's it's now almost for a year. So yeah, if you can, if you keep being negative, and that's also not in my nature. I always try to see the positive things, and that's what we do now. But we always keep yeah close. We will follow close up what's going on. We also are in contact with the virologists here in Antwerp. Uh, but yeah, they also say we, we cannot say anything. They're like, kind of like hopeful, but. For now, at the moment, can I be 100% sure that there will be a festival? No, I cannot say that for 100%. Maybe you can do events, but how? Do you still have to keep social distance? Do you have to wear your mask? Uh, maybe only for a maximum of 500 people? We don't know that yet. So now, government says that by the half of uh, March, they will say something more. So we're kind of like waiting for that. Uh, but yeah, we started the ticket sales again because <laughs> we're hoping to have like a big fest uh, by the end of this year. So yeah, it's, ama it's an go. amazing festival. It's one of the well, greatest things much. in the yeah. calendar. How do you talk to brewers about that? And how um, do yeah, brewers, they are very understandable about it. Yeah, because of course, yeah, COVID is, is not only Belgium, it's worldwide. So, um, and uh, almost every brewer said like, yeah, we will come next year. So, but of course, yeah, we have to start contacting them again because, yeah. We don't know of all the brewers, like how hard it affected them. Uh, and I know we have, uh, normally we have brewers coming from the States, from Canada, from Brazil. So we don't know yeah, if they have like enough time or, or budget to say like, yeah, we can make a trip to Belgium now. So it's a little bit also that waiting, but, but for sure, they're going to be 50 amazing breweries. I know that, but it's going to be a little bit yeah, also waiting. Okay, what's going to happen also? Because some brewers, you know, they, they stopped like like uh, brewing some specials specialties and only their core range, but they know that at our festival they don't have to bring their core range. 
So some of them may be going to say, well, we don't have to, uh, enough specials, only Corey, so maybe it's best for us not to come this year. So it's a little bit, um, yeah, we have to wait and see. But What's your feeling about the uh, craft beer scene in Antwerp now and uh, the survival of all the bars? Because it's not just the yeah. craft scene, it's the, whole, yeah. it's the whole infrastructure and the feeling that there's yeah. so many wonderful Well, I places. have a lot of like contact with... Uh, not only with people in the craft beer scene, but also the, the horeca here in Antwerp. And I hear more and more from people say, yeah, the second lockdown is uh, hit, hit them harder than the first. Uh, not only financially, but also uh, yeah, mentally. Um, and they're surviving, but everyone is now hoping, okay. But it is what I hear from people and also for myself. We rather have that, that it stay a little bit strict, a little bit longer. So when we can open, we can finally open, but it's always that opening, closing, opening, closing, or opening, and then ah, oh, now till 10 o'clock, then till 11 o'clock, then closing, and it's that, that because people sometimes think like, oh, we're just closing the bar, you put your key in the door, close it, and a few months later, you just take your key again, and you can open again. No, that's not, that's not the case. So short-term so, pain for long-term gain. Yeah, yeah. That's I very think that's, well said. Yeah. I think that's what's yeah. important and a yeah. lot of people aren't realizing yeah, that. Yeah, no. So that's what we're hoping for. And yeah, I hear now from a few people who are a little bit like also working that area in Brussels that they will say could be that uh, in April, just before Eastern holidays that bars can open again. So that's what we're grabbing on now and hoping that then finally we can uh, open again. But I'm I'm convinced that when bars and restaurants can open again, I think it will be the start of the Roaring Twenties. Because people had enough of it, we hear it enough, I think uh, bars and restaurants will be fully packed. It's going to be crazy. I think you're completely right, because we're yeah. seeing that in the music scene, where some music festivals are launching, yeah. and artists are so pent up, they're getting some yeah. amazing artists in festivals that were quite small. You know, we have yeah. Kendrick Lamar coming to a very f small Solidarity Festival, and big names so do you yeah. think the same thing will happen in the beer I, world yeah i think so I'm, I'm pretty sure yeah i'm glad you mentioned the mental part how are yeah. you holding up mentally well i'm well like i said for me it's good that i have my shop um like i said because it gives me structure uh, i i also need it especially for such a long time uh, and I have that social contact, and and that's maybe very funny to to to, to say, but uh, I have a lot of uh, uh, about B uh, with Billy. It's, it's it's crazy, but it is. Yeah, I have to take him out for a walk. I can talk to him. Okay, he never says anything back, which is sometimes very nice. <laughs> but it is. It is. Yeah, you're not like alone, alone. So I'm doing well, but you have to be honest. I also have some times that I that I had like. Pfft, yeah, is it all worth it? Uh, should I stop, do something else? But that's only for a short period and then I don't know, of course. But yeah, I also have moments that I was pretty down, yeah. Because yeah, with the first lockdown, it's also different. There's a lot of like sunshine, you can go outside, weather is beautiful. Now it's dark, it's cold. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it, it affects you and also not having a perspective, that's also very difficult. You don't have a perspective and I know a lot of like, the people I know in the craft beer, they're like all entrepreneurs. They like to do stuff. They have, to, they like to plan things. And but you cannot plan anything because you know, when are you gonna open? How can you open again? Uh, you, you cannot do anything, and that's a that's a difficult one. So, speaking of Billy, it's amazing. Yeah. You know, he's alive. He yeah. looks lively. Yeah. yeah. Can you tell us what happened? And I mean, yeah. I, it's amazing what so. you did. I, I don't call uh, you an owner, I call you a partner with Billy. Oh, because yeah. he represents your yeah. festival yeah. and a lot of people care about it. But the care when he got sick with yeah. cancer, it was cancer, It was right? cancer, yeah. It, uh, yeah uh, no, can you tell us a bit about that and what that meant to you and to see him? Yeah, it was... Because uh, everybody gave him up as dead, Yeah, really. it was like people are still asking about him and I said like, yeah, it's crazy, I can hardly believe it, but it's, yeah, in two weeks it's, it's exactly... A year ago that the vets here in Belgium, they found like a brain tumor and they said like, oh, if you're very, very lucky, maybe three months, but that's that's absolute max and then you're very lucky. And I know that when I was sitting there, he said like, yeah, maybe it's hard, but the best thing is that if we give him like a final injection already, and I was like, uh, I don't think so. 
So I found uh, the Universal uh, Pet Hospital um, in Utrecht, the Netherlands. So I made an appointment and they gave him radiation. So we had to go for during a month long, every day, we had to go back and forth uh, to Utrecht to give radiation, which is also for Billy because he's a snort, short, uh, short snouter. So he has to be sedated every day. Um, but he's doing well now. He didn't have any seizure anymore. Uh, he's very active, very playful. He's very much alive. And I know sometimes when he's playing with other dogs that people say like, how old is he? Because he's already 11 years and a half, which is already very old for a Frenchie. And they say like, whoa, he's more playful than my pup. He's, he's, yeah. he's, he's very healthy, very playful, and he's doing very, very well. Yeah. And I, I, it was a commitment you made to do that because you basically yeah. gave up your bar for a while, I guess. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Off to yeah. And that is, I could also do that with, with an amazing team that Billy has because they took care for Billy, for the bar, for the shop, and also for myself because, yeah, I, was, I didn't do anything else than going to Utrecht, way there, come back. And, and then, yeah, uh, there were times that Billy couldn't walk anymore. Um, he couldn't hold his, yeah, like pooping and peeing. So it was for me, it was uh, yeah, going to sleep, setting my alarm clock an hour later, going outside with him, carrying him yeah, back in bed for an hour back. So I was completely, well, it's weird because at the time I wasn't exhausted. When I think about it now, I thought, how did I do that? But at that time, I don't know, maybe I was on an automatic pilot. I don't know, it was going, yeah, it was going well. So, um, but I had some people saying like, you're crazy. You say for also all the money that you spent, you could buy four more new billies. And then I was like, maybe it's crazy, but if you have children and you say one of your children has cancer, are you gonna say then, oh, let's make a new one? No, you do everything you can to, to save. Because yeah, for me, it's not like a dog or he's, yeah, he's, yeah, he's with me for 11 and a half years. We do everything together. He's, He's like a kid to me, he's like my best friend, like a son, yeah. Maybe crazy for some people, but yeah. That's a beautiful he's story. A, I really appreciate yeah. that you told us that. Oh, no, that you're welcome. <laughs> and let's hope for the future and of course that Billy's Absolutely. Long Liberty continues and we see you at the next Billy's Beer Festival with Billy. Uh, hopefully, well, we will be there. We will definitely be there. Hope to see as many people as possible because we really missed them last year. So uh, we will hopefully have a big, big party by the end of uh, 2021. Man, God, <laughs> I was almost ready to cry there, man. Thank you. Oh, no, thank you very much. <laughs> 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 right. <laughs>